Hi everyone, this is Mukta Sharma. Uh, in this video, we are going to discuss test 10 scenario based interview question and answers for manual testing, automation testing. This can be asked to anybody. I have considered the level for like two to five years of experience. This is on demand video. Let's start. First question is when a bug is reported in production, but it was not caught in testing cycles. What do you do? So you can see like uh, first and we will analyze how the bug was skipped from the testing cycle. Have we not covered this in our testing? What are the requirements? Uh, what all are the requirements um, that we covered? And we will also check the requirement traceability matrix to ensure that whether we have covered the test case or whether it got missed from our end. Or was it due to some missing test case, incorrect test data or environment mismatch? Document the root cause and update your test suite to prevent future occurrences, right? You have to explain in such a way that, you know, these are the realistic examples. It, it can happen with anybody. So you can say yes, or because of all these scenarios, we will analyze everything and then uh, we will... Uh, we will take the necessary action. For example, let's consider the example of your application. In post system, point of sale system, uh, the discount was applied to items that should not be discounted. So the issue was due to an untested edge case. So we added new test case and we covered that scenario. Later on, we updated our test coverage. Like that, you can uh, reply in the interview. Second question, you are asked to start testing, but requirements are not clear. Then what will you do? So I would say if requirements are not clear, I will try to connect with the uh, business analyst or solution architect. I will try to arrange a call with them and I will, you know, um, ask my queries. Uh, with that, I will also check the documentation if there are any documentation in the SharePoint or somewhere that can help increasing my knowledge about the requirements. And then I will do exploratory testing and uh, I will try to understand uh, like what is required. And also I will also keep the stakeholders in loop about the about if there are any any gaps. Right. So it depends on the uh, like level what you are at. If you are reporting to your lead, then you will let him know. And if you are the senior person in the team, you will let your project manager, team manager and, you know, other uh, uh, stakeholders informed. For example, the return policy in the uh, post object was unclear. So we explored the UI. We observed the return limits. We had a meeting with business analysts. We uh, discussed uh, with them about, you know, the return policy and business analyst was also not very sure. So he went back to project manager uh, to the business and then uh, he came back with the updated information and we included that particular test case in our test, uh, in our test management system. Next question. A developer disagree with the bug that you have raised. How do you handle it? So for, we should stay professional, demonstrate the defect with clear steps, logs and screenshots. If needed, you can involve a lead or a BA in your call and, uh, you know, focus on collaboration rather than confrontation. So we, first you can demonstrate the steps to reproduce what you have done. What is the test data that you have used? What is the environment that you have used in which environment you have tested? If you have any logs, you can take the help of logs and as well as screenshots. And also you can note down the time at which time you have uh, tested that particular uh, scenario because sometimes it happens a developer may ask you uh, what time did you test it they may ask some questions like that so you can you know make a note of time also and then uh, tell them that okay this is the bug i have raised this is the environment this is the uh, operating system this is the browser for example, you reported an issue where the card payment was not uh, recording correctly. Developer initially dismissed it, but when I showed the logs and when I showed them uh, the uh, screenshots and step-by-step -step procedure and I had a call with him, I shared my system and reproduced the issue, then he got convinced that, okay, uh, this is a bug and he started working on it. Question number four, a critical scenario is not working. Critical feature is not working and it is releasing is in two hours. What is your approach? Immediately, we will escalate the issue to test lead or your manager and development team. And we will say that this particular feature is not working. So at that point of time, we will arrange a call. Everybody come together in the call and we will analyze um, how best we can handle the situation. Prioritize the fix or rollback. Retest the fix, perform a mi mini regression uh, cycle on uh, that particular area. 
so it happens that you know uh, with the help of team collaboration we decide that okay uh, we should fix it developer fix it and then immediately testers will uh, um, test it and then it is deployed as a hot fix to the production Right. So when scenario based questions are asked to you, you need to explain the situation nicely with the help of some example, which you might have worked in your project. Don't give one line answers. One line answers never help, never help anybody. So, next question. You are given a login page to test. What all scenarios will you cover? I will say I will cover all the positive scenarios. I will cover all the negative scenarios. I will test valid username and password with valid combination and invalid combination. I will also check the blank fields. I will also check SQL injection queries. I will also check the case sensitivities in these fields. I will also check the password masking. I will also check remember me checkbox when I check the checkbox what happens and when I keep it like that leave it I won't check it then what happens what are the error messages I get on the screen if I leave only email field blank what is the error message and if I leave only password field blank what is the error message and if I keep both the fields uh, blank and then click on login what happens right uh, logged account after multiple attempts after how many uh, multiple in login you are getting uh, logged account these are also so these are the scenarios you can explain like okay these are the scenarios i will try to test example you tested special characters in fields login attempts and browser back button browser back button is also very important feature which people forget to um, check or mention yeah question number six the application is integrated with a third party service that is currently unavailable how do you test so whenever there is a question like that, we will say that we are using mock server or we are using, you know, stubs. We are using uh, uh, this thing for uh, third party service like mock server. What do I mean by that? You can see like in Postman, we have a option to create mock servers. So we will ask developers to create, uh, you know, a mock server. They will... Uh, uh, they will create it and they will give us a url with the help of that url we will hit the api we will also tell them to mock response also so that when we test we get the mock response and uh, we can uh, validate it uh, and when the actual service is ready then we can test it this this example is based on uh, my uh, real-time example of working in one project where we were uh, having apple pay as the payment uh, method Right. So what we did, uh, user initiates checkout, selects Apple Pay, uh, but Apple Pay was not uh, available online, uh, not available for our testing. So we asked developers to create, you know, uh, mock APIs, mock responses. And uh, so that when we hit, when we um, select Apple Pay, it should give us a response as well as some negative scenarios also. And once the Apple Pay server was up and running, we did our, you know, uh, testing. So in this way, you can um, you can explain. This will show that you have a bit of understanding about this area and you should be able to manage the situation going forward. You have limited time, but you need to test a large module. What do you do? So first, in that case, I will prioritize high level test cases, high risk areas and critical test cases. Based on those high risk area, I will quickly, you know, uh, identify test cases, focus on the positive flow and business critical scenarios. I will also do exploratory testing for the low risk area uh, just to be uh, just to ensure that, you know, we have not missed any area. Communicate test coverage and limitations to stakeholder. Always keep your stakeholders informed about what you have tested and what are the risk based areas, what are the high critical areas that have been tested. For example, you had only two hours to test a new discount module. You first tested common discount types, combos and expiry validation before diving into low priority rules. Question number eight, you found a blocker defect just before your test cycle ends what steps will you take so we will lock the bug with high severity and priority first of all we will also inform our lead or we will also inform the development lead about it we will inform everybody immediately whether by the teams uh, we will ping them on the teams or we will mail them also yeah and then uh, 
if you are the senior person in your team if you have the authority to take decision then you can delay the sign off and retest thoroughly once fixed and document the incident but if you are not at uh, you know if you are not given the authority to delay the sign off i mean if you are not a manager or at that level then you will let your lead inform about it that we have found this defect this is high severity and immediately inform ba and you know other stakeholders so that uh, a joint decision can be taken on that Uh, defect and then uh, yeah accordingly we will take it forward from there if it can be fixed they will fix it and uh, if it can be deferred to the next release they will defer it to the next release yeah uh question number 9 scenario based question you need to test across multiple environments staging environment uat how do you manage that so keep a clear environment checklist so when uh, we start testing like in sometimes in the test plan we have these things clear like what all are the test environments going to be uh, tested use versioning to check code deployment ensure test data is environment specific yeah and just make sure that whatever test test data you are using in test environment can you use the same data in uat environments can you use the same data in uh, staging environment yeah reuse test cases but customize validation points for each environment you can rerun the same test kit which you have used in your functional testing but make sure that you are doing some you know customization in the validation points or maybe some changes in the customer uh, data or in the test data overall for example in an e-commerce web application you tested product filtering in stages in staging environment uat environment and then you verified hot fix in production yeah so in some companies you have access to pre production uh, but uh, not all uh, pre production environment is like a replica of production en environment not everybody has the access to that because it is very um, critical and very case sense very sensitive data it has actual customer details so you need to be very careful if you are working in pre production environment yeah or maybe uh, staging also staging is a replica of production environment scenario number 10 a tester missed a critical scenario in a release how do you prevent such issues in the future so first we will if it is a miss from our side we will admit that it's a miss from our side we will try to conduct root cause analysis update test case reviews and peer reviews we will check the requirement traceability matrix we will have a look in the jira and see if we have covered that test case or if it got missed improve if it is missed then we will try to improve our traceability matrix add miss scenario to the regression we will try to add a new scenario and then um yeah we will let everybody know in the team that you know this is the process we should be um following going forward so that it won't miss next time for example a refund with expired loyalty points was not tested after it got failed in production we added in regression testing updated our matrix and shared the gap with your team so maybe in sprint retrospective meeting we can discuss these points like this is the process which we are going to follow from next time Tr requirement traceability matrix is the matrix where we ensure that all the requirements are tracing are being traced by test cases one requirement should have at least one test case and it can be from one to one one to one means one requirement can have one test case and one to many means one requirement can have multiple test cases so the mapping can be one to one or one to many Uh, sometimes people create uh, requirement traceability metrics in excel sometimes uh, we get the metrics in jira tool itself if you are preparing requirement traceability metrics in excel you have some fields you have some columns like requirement id test case id test case description and the status and requirement id you get it from your function requir requirement document and test case which you have written in your test case um, system jira or zephyr or whatsoever and then you will say status pass that will show that this requirement has been covered by this test case and if you have one more test case then you will write one more test case id with the same requirement that will show that this requirement has this many test cases right and that requirement traceability matrix in excel or whatever file you have um, derived from your tool you will attach it in your test summary report and send it to project manager or test manager uh, or project stakeholders that okay this is what we have and we have covered the we have the maximum test coverage i hope this video is useful to you if you find this video useful please like comment and share this video with your friends and guys these are the scenario based testing questions if you have any more doubts or any inputs about this video please uh, write in the comments i would be happy to interact with you through the com comment section all right guys bye bye